Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It is me, Duke CT, here live this Wednesday evening on the Duke CT Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me. Almost, by the way, I have to give this out almost to 20,000 downloads. Thank you, everyone, who have downloaded this podcast for so many years to, to get me to this one point. 20,000 downloads. I am, you know, that is almost, that is amazing. Almost to up to 20,000 downloads, you know. Um, <laughs> that is amazing. And thank you. Seriously, thank you to everyone who has listened, downloaded from YouTube to uh, Medic Expression to Freaking Awesome Network to everyone around uh, to have looked, supported, and did everything, um, you know. Uh, to um, to to continue, um, you know, continue to uh, su- you know, support this, uh, um, you know, um, this show, this wacky little podcast I started a couple years ago. I am again so humble, so happy that this show has uh, been here for so long, and it has gotten to this uh, height. Here's hoping it reached the forty thousand, and and again, if you, um, you know, again, um, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I will uh, definitely, yes, definitely, um, t- uh, you know, be doing a lot more uh, stuff here. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, do more. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, review. Uh, you know, uh, not just the podcast, but also more stuff to continue this. Uh, you know, this 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 experience and such. So much love, so much um, you know, appreciation. So again, I thank you. I am humbled by um, your uh, continued listening, watching. This uh, podcast grow. Uh, once again, thank you. And I love all of you. Every one of you. The haters, the doubters, and everyone in between. Thank you. Thank you so much. But now, uh, without being said, to continue this whole thing, we have to talk about, well, uh, let's, let's, um, let us get into, well, the series, uh, the thing I was going to talk about, the review, um, Voltron season seven. Oh wow, what a season it is! Um, I have to say there has been so much. Um, a lot of people have been a lot, a lot of good. They're not a bad for this, but you know what? You know, it's um. There's the show itself, and then the controversy. Um, you know, and everything else. We'll get to all the, uh, you know, everything about this stuff. Uh, uh you know, uh, talked about all the uh, controversy it is. But, you know, I, I have to say there were some good uh, positives and some bad. But uh, overall, there was some, um, again, I think this series is getting a lot better. Um, you know, you know, this man is a bit. But again, it goes good. Things I loved, I really did like the, um, um, you know, the, the road trip parts of it. Um, the beginning of the series did seem to be going to that like motions and such, and how the characters grew, especially the journey within. Even though the feud was a little bit like that, but I'll get to that. But to me, one of my favorites well, it was the journey of within that type of way to really connect the paladins and such, to really get that and deeper connection to the lions. I think that was actually one of the things I like about this series is the connection to the lions that they, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, paladins had over the past couple of, uh, you know, the seasons and such. You just see over time, they have been, um, you know, overall this season, uh, the series had been teasing about this. The only time you really saw them connect was, you know, um, the paladins have that much connection was in, I think the, that big fight with, uh, um, let's see, uh, sh- um, <clears throat> what was it? <coughs> um, you know, not Lotor. 
Lotor 2, but it's, uh, <laughs> oh gosh, um, uh, um, you know, um, uh, but yeah, it's from, uh, again, the Emperor Zarkon, yeah, he was so, yeah, Emperor Zarkon, again, uh, something that he was, um, you know, when the season two finale, when, uh, that huge thing, <laughs> and he was left for a coma for the most part, and then came back and then gets murked by Lotor, or is it, dun, 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 probably, but who knows, hmm, but yeah, it's very, very, um, you know, who's going to, I don't know what's going to happen uh, for this new, um, you know, again, I think this is going to the, you know, and by the way, the one thing I liked about there's actually 13 episodes again, because, okay, it's always seven, six, six, seven. I mean, seriously, some of these seasons could have been just combined to like two. season three, season four could have combined to one, uh, five and six could be combined to one, two, three, four. That could have been season three. Should have been a whole. You know, technically it's been like you know, three. This is technically season five, but man, they now they got like thirteen episodes, and and it's deservedly so. The the series did grow. I mean, I think it was a lot better off because I was worried because if they got to this journey within, I'm like, oh, thank goodness, there's actually more episodes to go through because. It seems like that would be like the finale of the, the road trip stuff, and then we get into the Earth the next season. But here they actually um, continue again. Uh, I did like again the um, you know uh, let's say for example the way forward. I think that was actually um, uh, pretty nice and such. I like the the idea of uh, you know there was some good stuff. Again, personally, I like like I said the feud was really good because it was. Uh, <laughs> Nice little game show or such of a past type of clip show and such uh, with all the characters. And, and then when they, you know, uh, wanted to get uh, off, tell you one person was going to get off. Um, every character except Keith, Keith did not want Lance. Because, like, look, the reason why I didn't want to say to choose Lance to get out here, said, I just don't want to say attorney and Keith. Everyone had a good answer. He said, Hunk, my princess, a lawyer, because... Hey, she's a diplomat. She's this. She could bring the people together to take down the Gaul. So yeah. Um, next was uh, uh, Laura's like, okay, Pidge is smart. She could do all this type of stuff to to make sure, like, hey, she continue to, to, to work and have all that type of uh, to continue to work on the Castle Lions, the the, the rebuild the Castle Lions. Um, Lance picked uh, Keith because, hey, he's half Gaul or human. I think he's going to be the future to say, hey, he could bridge those two worlds. You know, that sort of thing. To save Gaul from themselves and something like that. Um, and, not, and then you have Keith with his little lol answer because it's funny. And then you have Pidge said Hunk because, like, well, Hunk gets along with everyone. And he said, you know what? Honestly, um, you know, that sort of thing, um, you know, really says, you know, he's the best guy to keep people together. Everyone likes him. And then it gets to what the journey within was, to his, you know, because everyone was going crazy and it was Hunk who drove, and got to say, you know, after basically losing the lines because of this, like, weird space thing, um, you know, after those uh, holograms and stuff, it was Hunk that basically saved them for this big, huge space creature and then based, and then just have them uh, take it like take down the creature with his um Bernard that worked out. And I was like, wow, this actually is you know, he really does you know, like this guy has transformed over the past years of him proving that he, you know, again, hunk prove continue to prove himself, and that's and I love that, even though that well, going into say, for example, the time skip, which yeah, I should have gotten to that first, <laughs> the time skip up because of the uh whole. Um, fight with Lotor, who is still MIA. We don't know if Lotor is alive or dead, so he's stuck in the Crutensens field, so maybe he got out. Who knows? Maybe he got out on a later date. Maybe he got out in the past. Maybe he got out in another dimension. Who knows? 
But yeah, thanks to that fight and, and such, and had to use Castle Alliance to, to basically swing the hole. Bam! Three, four years later, they have been warped four years later. And now they had to, you know, that's what they because of Earth being, um, then they had to go back to Earth. Earth! <laughs> uh, Earth, oh dear. Now, it's under Gara control. Yay! Oh, joy. Because, hey, that's... Because Lord knows that's not going to get into... No, no, no. Well, the Earth is just fine. <laughs> but, yeah, um, we saw back, you know, back, you know how the Earth got there, you know, um, each one, uh, you know, the last stand, uh, how uh, the, each character's, uh, you know, the Pidge's dad um, basically helped, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, I gotta get four. I gotta be uh, uh, talk about it because again, I watch the old series um, just today. Again, like I said, I think overall it's a good series. And um, you know, when we get back to the point, Pidge's dad, uh, you know, he helped uh, basically build the um, you know the, the the garrison up, even though uh, <laughs> under the uh, against the advice of the admiral, seemed to be like oh gosh, every single you know, like you know. Uh, like you know, dang it! Why do you keep pushing my buttons? Right? Like, like it's just like the police captain stuff, which is so generic and so stuck. Like, first it was the commander, the dude. Let me just see this. Um, um, does it? Let's see. The Admiral saw, uh, saw uh, Sanda. Um, the uh, she was the um the uh, top person in charge. Oh, Commander Iverson. And yes, it was Sam Hall basically, um, you know, he returns back to Earth, builds up the garrison. With Admiral Sanders, like, kind of like, no, 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 we had to make sure. And I agree, Admiral Sanders, you had to make sure the protocols are met, like, there is alien life and such. And, you know, I love the fact one of those people in the crew, like, the 10,000 years of soul story, he was sharing the story console. He's like, and Sam Hall looked at him like, dude. This thing is like, uh, he said, dude, these people have been, um, you know, taking over the galaxy in 10,000 years. And Earth was, you know, barely even functional and such. They were conquering the galaxy and such. Boy, you spell your name. <laughs> Sorry about for Earth on the break. But yeah, it gets, they say that this group, these these aliens are a threat. Like, none other. So we got to prepare. We got to build up and everything. And they say, yeah, we have to build up with the technologies and eventually that sort of stuff and boom, bam, that sort of thing kept building up and building up the military uh, and such. And, you know, they actually built up a nice little uh, defense, um, um, you know, for the inside the garrison, you know, a nice little force field. Uh, but, it, you know, it wasn't going fast enough. In fact, uh, not only that, but also these nice new um, jets, which I would not be surprised that, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Guys, you get, uh, let's see the... Um, uh, we have the people who are um, the, these garrison pilots, these new um, MFE Ares fighters. Griffin, Razi, Kendike, Kincaid, and Leafstor. I honestly, in uh, Veronica's, uh, Le, Le, um, uh, Lance's sister and such. Which, I would not be surprised if they are going to do the, um, let's see, what? Uh, um... If they're going to do a uh, vehicle team Voltron, I would not be surprised if they're going to eventually do. Um, once again, they're going to bring in those uh, characters if they're going to do the vehicle uh, vehicle Voltron vehicle team Voltron. I would not be surprised if you're going to see Adam Griffin, Rizzy, Ke yeah, one, two, three, four. And six, like Veronica, to be in there. I don't know. You know I think I would not be surprised if that was going to happen. Uh, but yeah, um, <coughs> uh, yeah, I, I've. Uh, but yeah, they finally build up. Um, 
um, you know, the, the source. And the reason why they get the help to build up the, the garrisons and everything else is because, um, basically, Commander Sir Holt, like, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, he went all, um, let's see, um, well, he went out and just released, every, like I said, uh, Admiral Sander, like, you know, we, can't, we need to keep building up our stuff because, you know, eventually the goal is going to come. Uh, but uh, before we get to that later on in the episode, they got a communication from uh, Matt, who was the uh, Matt Holt, who was the, the older brother of Pidge, basically was, um, you know, a, um, you know, uh, one of the side characters who helped, uh, you know, you know help Voltron and stuff over the end of the galaxy is basically, you know, he contacted him and said, please, we can't don't broadcast this location because it could put him in danger. Voltron's been missing MIA for a while. And then, you know, he comes back after everything's done. But, you know, then, you know, I'm saying, you know, we have to continue following protocol, you know, to go on, but, you know, we have to end up communications. Fine. Uh, then, after that, you know, the, you know, so, uh, Sam Hall's like, we got to on Earth. Okay, then we got to uh, warn everyone, talk about, but yeah, Aaron Sanders like, look, we can't do that. Uh, we are going, because again, it will big world life panic and everything, but you know, Sam Hall and his uh, his wife basically pushed her, uh, you know, uh, pushed her, Colleen, pushed Colleen Hall, by the way, uh, pushed, uh, pushed, uh, uh, you know, Sam to basically, you know, would all, um, you know, um, <laughs> uh, gosh, become a whistleblower or such, you know, and basically just said, oh, screw, here's all the files on the internet, and here's everything, well, you know, aliens exist, y'all, deuces. <laughs> and then before, you know, before, you know, they, you know, then after that, he was going to put them on the brig. But then he's like, you know, I have said, you know what? Screw it. Who is, you know, one eyed? Which, by the way, why can't they just give him an eye patch? I'm serious. Why can't they just uh, I give him an eye patch? I mean, why not? Eye patches are cool. Seriously, what's wrong with not giving the man an eye patch? Why, is it too futuristic? Does it make him look like a pirate? Come on now. Let's, come on, man. Let, let, let the dude get a get let him do it. Let him have his, um, you know, let him have an eye patch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yes. He, you know, um, he says, we got to put me in the pot and everything else. And, and then next, um, um, uh, random soldiers are saying, you know what? We got all phone calls. They all want to help build this thing, uh, the Atlas. They want to build the Atlas, thing, this huge, big ship. They kept, they, you know, a couple months go by and bam, you know, before you know it, boom, the goal will show up and, well, they take over Earth in a matter of, well, shh, an alien invasion takes over quite quickly. Yeah. Other than the garrison with their force field, everyone basically gets murked. Everything. The entire world basically like, yeah, of course, it goes against, like, in every alien invasion, you're not, and I'm like, and I love the fact that Emerald, even though they knew that these people are probably, <laughs> oh man, they don't get it. I'm like, dude, she, I'm like, you, you realize you're going against a race of uh, sentient beings, and she's like, oh, we don't have no information. She gave you the information that these are, Salt gave you the information about these are 10,000 year old species, uh, 10,000 year old war fearing race that goes and conquer planets. Walk more advanced than we have to here on Earth. They're more advanced than Earth. What makes you think you have a shot basically doing the same type of stuff with defenses? And I was like, seriously? You, you still think this? I, 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 oh my gosh, you're stupid. You're dumb. Dumb. Just dumb. You are legitimately dumb. And I am just amazed at your stupidity. I mean, you, I'm amazed at your stupidity, ladies. Like, my gosh, you are a, uh, uh, the st stupidity here is just amazing. And the arrogance and hubris by Emerald Sonda lines up all those ships and everything else. And, and uh, well, I'll get to the controversy in a second. But <clears throat> they, these, needless to say... Um, well, Adam, <laughs> uh, Shiro's former boyfriend. Yes, Shiro is the LGBTQ character. Okay, fine. I'm like, okay, well, Shiro's gay. Okay, I don't care. 
and uh, Adam's um, I uh, Adam well flies up against a basically an alien force that is so powerful, like beyond any type of technology. So every weapon they throw at it fails, and then guess what? And then every pilot, everyone dies. Firstly. First off, Aaron Sanders should just be like, yeah, no, you can't win this thing. We need to be like, you know what? We need to be taking our tactics and such. And she's like, oh, absolutely not. We still need to do Paul. I'm like, do you, this is, again, arrogance and hubris can go so far at that point. This makes no sense. And, and I'm like, oh, gosh, this is, you know, the character is just, and it gets, and she gets stupider moving on and such. Ugh. But yeah. Um. What else? Uh, let's see what else happened. Oh yes, they came back. You know, the Voltron Force returned, and they didn't get much. Of, they got some reaction. Lance got his family the hug and everything else. They're happy to see him, and well, Hunk can get to see his family, and nice little flashbacks. And Hunk, you know, confiding in Keith about saying, "Hey, I can't save my family and such." It's really, and it's actually pretty nice, uh, good stuff. And he's like, he's going to sneak out and see, save his family and everything. And Keith goes with him, says, you know what? No, I'm not like, actually. So it's just, you know, it's nice to see that type of camaraderie and type of you know, character. Value. When, hey, when, um, because remember, when, <laughs> when, um, when Hunk was down, Hunk. Uh, you know, it was the, funny enough. It was Keith, Keith, the one who is uh the most well standoffish and such. The well, the email, the email group, the email part of the um, you know, uh, the uh, the the Voltron. You know, <laughs> like you can't make me clean my room, Dad. That dude, but he's matured. But yeah, he's matured. But yeah, he is. Um, he um, he he um, you know, he said, you know what. You know, he helped them out, um, and they found out these things. Like, you know what? Uh, we found where they were, and they were working in this like camp and everything. It's um, yeah. I was like, wow, this is you know, nice little like saying he's gonna come back and save him. Oh yeah, it was a nice little um way of uh building. Like, hey, you know, that's nice. A way to continue this um, you know, the story. You know, saying that you know what what would be the plan to save them and save the well. To save the, the such like that, and then we get to, well, the um slowly they uh, slowly but surely they uh finally they have a plan to, to take down Sindak once and for all. By the way, it was Sindak, you know that dude with his like you know, you know that's no arm thing there. Sindak, you know, taking you know Sindak, um, you know, basically took over Earth. He's like, okay, uh, you know, they're, you know, they're finally for planning to take him down. They took him, and, and you know, it was you know, nice little you know movement to get the lines back on Earth, and nice little dramatic tension with um Lance and his sister Veronica, thinking that oh my gosh, the lines not gonna make, man, the line made it, and it seemed that, and then they looked like they were finally to take down the cannons, but yet everything seemed to be going wrong, like they like the Gora knew the plan, hmm, but then it was revealed. There was Andrew Sanda who revealed the whole thing to basically save Earth. Dun, dun, dun. He's like, oh, I gave you the lions, but let me have the paladins to go back up. Like, no. And he, and he, and Sinda's like, bitch, please. You, you're going into the same thing. He's like, oh, I'm going to alter and be at the deal. And then basically, like, just locked him, locked him up with the uh, paladins. And she just like, you know, I made my, like, you know, I made, you know, I made a terrible error. I need to go and uh, save the. She needs to go back. Like, I need to go back and fix this and such. And um, and she does sacrifice herself to save the lions while the lion while the paladins were meditating and getting their lions to basically help destroy the fleet uh, and such. And meanwhile, back on Earth, they finally got the Atlas going. You know, it basically helped basically destroy their own shields to do like basically had to divert powers to their shields and such. Then, um, then, uh, then meanwhile, 
the paladins using their mind link to basically use the line uh, the lines to well again tear stuff up while they're um in the ship and such, which is like <laughs> uh, that they, they they've truly synced with their lines, it's, which is um wow even Cheryl was impressed um with it. And he's like, wow, exactly. He's like, oh, this is amazing. He's actually smiling. Like, yes. Yeah. He's like, whoa, Cyril. Calm down a bit. Calm down. Like, oh, he's easy. Big fella. Hey, hey. Take a breath, man. Take a breath. But yeah. And then he was, well, happy in it. And then with a little bit of uh, help uh, and such with Admiral Sanda, who sacrificed herself to save the day, to save, to redeem herself with the Paladins and move on more on from that. He has sacrificed herself to save the day to, to save the day and then the lions and they uh paladins get into the lions and by starting to ruin and they see ruin syndac's day but well syndac had one plan using the cannons to basically blow up well the basically destroy the entire uh to destroy earth using particle radiation some type of thing that uh the uh, uh you know uh Pig, a pig's dad helped make the Garo build when he was captured by him. Um, and then just, you know, but yet, yeah, thanks to, um, you know, a little bit, like, you know, the lions pulled, like, the the uh, satellites to were helping them aim the uh, the, the blast to uh, the, um, the, the, uh, the guns. Bam! Knocked it down. Uh, helped them uh, basically uh, block them for a while until those things, um, Knocked them uh, till they can uh, hold them in off for longer, and well, it just did not work out for that long. And then um, next thing you know, it looked like oh the, the big beam is gonna destroy him, but then boom, Atlas was the, there to be uh, protect them. Atlas, dest- uh, you know, was the one that stopped the Earth from getting destroyed. Then, um, you know, uh, Cyril basically um, used. Um, you know, black yeah, Shiro basically came in there, did a little um stealth mission, took down the um the the crystal to basically uh make sure the uh the uh army t- just to overload the cannons. And the Lesson Alliance did the rest. That they destroyed each one destroyed the cannons to make sure that they're on you know, the cannons were not destroying the Atlas anymore. You know, and bam, it looked like it was over. You know, the the ship fell. It looked like uh, and they saved Shiro Right after Keith just came in and just did a nice little ki- uh, killing blow on Sendak. And it looks like the day is finally saved. They all can move on. And then... Uh, Robish came out of nowhere. Right out of nowhere. And I'm like... Why are you here? They just destroyed everything. And I'm like, even the character's like, we destroyed an entire Gawa fleet and now we gotta deal with it. I'm like, yeah. Shouldn't this be a season 8? Uh, premiere. I, I personally, I think this could be like a season eight type of premiere. Think about it. Season eight, they, they're relaxing. The, the paladins are sitting back, relaxing. They can still have all their stuff there at the end of the episode eight. And bam, that's you know, just wow. That would have been great. A great way to continue, like yeah, great way to really wake the paladins up and and do the same type of reveal. What happened to the Atlas Lane? Which, by the way, the Atlas turns into this big giant mech after you know. Uh, thanks to the um, energy crystal the, um, of the uh, the lions and such, the former castle of lions. So it looks like the atlas is going to be pretty much the new castle of lions. It's the used crystal and such. Transforms into this big old robot looking like, jeez. <laughs> like, you know, I was like, wow. At this point, there just really are even the power rangers at this point. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it's me. I'm like... <laughs> Like I'm like yo, <laughs> oh my gosh! I was like, you know, where is that? Um, what was the? Let's see, I gotta look. Uh, what power? What was the? Uh, which was? Let's see. Let's see. Um, let's see. I gotta look and say which was it. Um, um let's see. Oh, uh, here it is. Um, where is the season? It was season two. Uh, let's see. Was it uh, what's Zords? I gotta look at the Zords. 
Uh, Power Ranger Zords. I gotta see what what, what Zord was that. Okay, let's look at all the Zords. Okay, um, the biggest one is it? Let's see. It was Titanus. Maybe it was um the Titanus. Uh, uh, uh it was Titanus uh, such. I think it was the Ultra Zord. There it is. Maybe that was. It was pretty much um. The combined efforts of the Megazord, Dragonzord, and Titans, and they just squash monsters because it was too big. That was like that was the Atlas at that point. It was just way too gosh darn big, and it just like crunched it like and such. But this new robot is basically sucking out the quintessence and energy from the Voltron, and yet still, still the dude, the thing was so quick and powerful that it was like taking the thing down. I'm like, wow, that's not really a good debut. And such. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a good debut. Uh, for this big monster of a um, well, creature. But anyway. Um, long story uh, short. They did feed the Robies by stabbing it hard. They had the whole thing situated and done. Boom. There we are. And you know what? Uh, the series was uh, wrapped up there. Then we had the mystery who was really behind that Robies. An Altarian. That's still alive. Dun, dun, dun. And I still tease over season eight when that shows up. So that was Voltron season seven. And uh, yeah, like I said, it was good. Personally, I think the last episode really shouldn't been. I think that should have been a season eight premiere. And heck, I have Atlas turn, uh, turn into a big make Mac later on. And have that much more of an impact. It did have some stuff there help distract it, but... I think when you make a debut like that, maybe it's my pro wrestling side of me, is that when you have this huge, this huge mech, let it come back and just be the one and just save Voltron. It saves Voltron at the last second. Bam! Saves it. Uh, and then, you know, that would have been amazing. It should have been like, you know, um, that would have been an amazing type of, uh, of a reveal. And, uh, that's, that, that is my thing, but that's just me. But then, well, I want to talk about the well, Voltron. Well, uh, gosh, Voltron Season 7. And there was a bit of a controversy. And I first heard about this controversy uh, was a shout out to basically uh, a shout out to, um, you know, uh, Thoroughs uh, Unlimited, I think, um, let's see, um, uh, this, uh, let's see, where's the video, I think it's, so. ah, Thoros Unlimited, and uh, shout out to this uh, dude, he uh, basically called this out, and I gotta say, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, and again, and now it's basically, even though his video is like, you know, got nice views, but yeah, it got a lot of negative reaction. Of course, it's just, it doesn't, you know, it's sad that, you know, um, you know, people are like, you know, angry at this video and they're probably gonna be angry at my video about this, but yeah, it's, it's just, it, it's true. It's, it's, it's pretty much true that a lot of people who have, uh, you know, you know, it just seems as, you know, the lot of people who are upset about this, they're upset that, you know, Adam who was, uh, uh, had a relationship with Shiro to kill him and didn't have no room to Shiro to grieve. He does, he did give Shiro to grieve at the end of the series. Now, and then, you know, at the, at the end of the season, he's grieving. Um, uh, uh, but, and killing Adam in that type of, well, foolhardy attack, well, uh, and such. Someone say, hey, why didn't you have this and why put it in there? I don't think it was. You know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, again, characters die. It's a war drum. People die. Well, you know, they'll quote the great anime line. People die when they are killed. So, and, and Adam and Sarah, and I see a lot of people like, oh, we got to bury the gays and such. That TV trope thing, which, first off, don't try to read TV tropes. It's ugh, it's not good for you. I only, you know, I rarely go on TV tropes. Only once every couple months, actually. But, 
it just seems to me that a lot of people put a lot of emotions into it. And secondly, that the cure baiting thing, which I mean, if you want to make that argument, okay, fine. You want to say that is a, Hey, you know, they should have had Adam, like say, get injured and he's barely alive or something and says, you know, that sort of thing. And he's in a coma. Then they can, you know, reconnect later on. Okay, fine. That would have been actually been interesting. But, um, then we get to the stuff here about Lance and Keith. Oh boy, Lance and Keith. They have, and you know what? I'm going to say this right now. The shippers need to, 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 to sit down. You need to sit down right now and, you know, they need to, you know, they need to be um, right there. You know, you might have a, a the leg to stand on with the Adam and Cyril thing because, yeah, to introduce something this late in the game only to kill him later on. We could basically have some. There's an argument there saying about how that's a person. I don't see it. You need to have something. Cheryl need to regret there. Heck, personally, you could put it anyone else there. You could say it's a brother or a family member who's worried about Cheryl about his his disease. That you know, geez, I can't. We can't keep risking your life. We can't keep risking your life for this stuff. You know, what's the point of doing it? Sure, it ended up right for him. Well, mostly right. Since then he was tortured and uh, beaten. You know, tortured. Then after being torture, being recruited by Voltron, was his soul pretty much sucked into the Black Lion. Then was an evil clone. Then he gets body. Okay, yo, hey, you know what? At least I think that evil clone body basically cured up his uh, his stuff. So, hey, that's a positive, right? You gotta take the victories when you can take them. But <laughs> this whole Kalance issue, I'm gonna say this right now. This is something what fan. This is what fangirls have. Has been talking about for you. I'm like, this is what happened. I'm like, there was no history of Clance. Nothing. Nothing. Ugh. You know, Clance, <laughs> this whole issue about the having Clance and such. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. You know, it's just. <laughs> You know, you know, um, uh, Clance and everything else. They did, um, you know, uh, they didn't, uh, they didn't have any relationship. Right. First off, Lance had, you know, romantic feelings to Alora uh, since season one, and he has always been well, heading for the hell. Uh, he was heading for the um, um, uh, the straight team since season one. There's no been any evidence that he is, well, bats with the other team. I don't know about uh, Keith or anything else. Uh, Keith for that issue and such like that. Keith, I don't know. Maybe people will say that, but just, no. There's no, there's no, uh, you know, that's, but that is something. Uh, I mean, that's to me just, they, they, they try to look into something that's not even there. It's, it's there in their own little fan fiction world. And it's not, and and that's what the problem is. They say things that want to connect to the real canon, but it's not canon. And that's one of the dangerous things about fan fiction: that people get down to that rabbit hole. They get down to that rabbit hole and go into that places that you know what? It's not ill. You know, they're going the only way. They're gonna just piss them off. They're gonna make themselves angry. That's what it is. They're gonna make themselves angry. They're gonna make themselves pissed off. And and trust me, I can look into. A ton of, and I mean a ton of, like, YouTube videos, not just YouTube videos, but also, uh, uh, you know, just uh, art in general about that, uh, stuff like that. But, yeah, um, it's just, it just seems that, again, people going after the head, people who are just so angry that their head can, again, uh, um, you know, Thor Solomon said in this video, and he's getting bashed for it, which is a shame. You know, dudes should not be getting bashed with this point. But yet, you know, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised by this because Lord knows you, you go up against some of these females. Uh, some of these females, but, uh, you know, these young women. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, it just, oh, gosh. I mean, oh, Lord, man. Some of these women, some of these young, some young, young women and some of these young girls are just like, Oh, it's not my, it's my thing. It's like, they try to take it. It's my, they never worked on the show. They never did anything. All they did was make some fan art and fan fiction. I didn't think they could run the show. 
Newsflash is not. It's not like that. I know this old oh, so, uh, the Duke uh, uh, hates gay people. No, I don't hate gay people. So if it was planted in the show early, if it was in a part of their show and it's and everything else was baked in into it, then yeah, yeah, I would like to say Dale's character would connect. These guys, the the best thing, uh, if you want to have a, it's probably a friendship, at least associates and such. That's it. Why people still see this type of, you know, see this thing. They, they see it and they still have this whole, you know, this whole fan. F- and, they, and I know, I know I'm going to get upset about this. I know people get going to be mad at it, but I mean, oh my gosh, the queer banning backlash. I am just pissed off, man. You know, I'm just a- a- angry uh, about that. Uh, just, you know. Yeah, and, and they made an apology and, uh, and such. Personally, I don't think they should have. But, you know, <laughs> um, but at this, these are the showrunners, and they probably had to because at the, you know, they don't want, want to have that type of bad uh, publicity. But yet, quote, uh, this is uh, right here. Um, There's no way to take away the hurt some of you felt with the loss of Adam and from a biggest perspective, how we formed a potentially larger positive social message. What I can say is that we're writing, that we're writing an ever moving right line here and trying to get navigate the, at the best we can while still moving the conversation forward. Uh, there's something to stress. By the way, I'm reading this from the, um, you know, kind of like anime. I'll leave the link in the description here. Uh, it's an article by Megan Peters, who's from Comic Book and Anime. Like I said, link in the description. Uh, but yeah, I just I, I don't see why everyone's so angry about this. Yeah. yeah um, I just I don't think that again they always say things what they want to see and hear what he thinks what people want to hear. And I'm sitting here like yeah, and then. These same people who are like, oh, we shouldn't be threatening people, you know, and all this stuff are the ones who probably will, will go and threaten people on Twitter, go on uh, and harass and pretty much harass people, um, the showrunners and probably the voice, and, and the voice actors as well. Because again, it's just, you know, I mean, and you know what the sad part is? They're going to look back on this and they're like, oh my gosh, what did we do? <laughs> That's the thing. They're going to look back on this and they're going to be really, really uh, you know, uh, and such, really, uh, ang- uh, angry and such about that. Uh, but uh, anyway. Uh, but yeah, I, I, again, I look at this stuff and I'm like, and by the way, I do think that you know, personally, I feel like it's uh hilarious uh to me. Uh, you know, because with all the stuff that's going on in this planet right now, you're getting the, you know, y'all getting all upset. All the, twi- the using the Twitters and the hashtags and this a TV show on Netflix, a cartoon show on Netflix. I, I mean, you know, it's sad. But that's just my personal opinion. People need to, you know, they need to get a little more perspective. But hey, if you think I'm wrong or an asshole, leave a comment and such. Hmm. But anyway, we're going to take a small break. And man, we've been talking about this for a while. <laughs> Over an hour. Well, I'm hopefully are going to be talking less you know, time and so on and so forth. Uh, but anyway, we're going to take a small break. And when we return... We will be getting into, well, what Dave Melcher said. And, uh, well, keep it back into wrestling. And then we get into the review of what the latest, the past episode of Lucha Underground. And we're going to be right back. And we're going to be like, taking a good listen to some OC Remix song. Uh, let's see. We're going to listen to... Uh, let's see. Ooh. It's a good old ditty. Uh, let's see. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island Bowzilla Remix. Let's see how we listen to that. Okay, we'll be right. You know what? 
No, no, no. Let's see a little more uh, somber. How about something more relaxing after that? Because a lot of people are angry. So how about a little bit of underwater jog uh, from Sonic Hunters from 25, year, 25 years of Sonic Hedgehog sprinting towards adventure. Uh, Bowl half featuring auto fidelity here live with the everyone to sit back and calm themselves after this. Ugh, after this little discussion I had. And we'll be right back right after this here live on the Duke City Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me here on TalkShoe.com. We'll be right back right after. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on this Wednesday evening. Now, let's talk a little bit about Dave Meltzer. Oh, Dave Meltzer. Well, what things that he has talked got into? What mess he got into this time? Well, it was a interesting little podcast that he had um, way back on August the 9th on the Wrestling Observer podcast with him and co-host Brian Alvarez. He was talking about the Iconics, especially the Peyton Rice's looks. And the uh, link will be in the description of WrestleInc.com. And this is what he said. <clears throat> and I quote, I think they had a cool uh, Meltzer. <clears throat> I think they had a cool act at NXT on the main roster. I didn't get a thing out of them. I don't think their promos are particularly good. Their wrestling isn't good. I think they even like, I think Peyton Rice's transformation to look more attractive. I don't know. I don't want to say, but I don't think that. They, Alvarez, they, that they were more attractive in NXT. Uh, Meltzer, I thought so, yes. To me, yes, I would say so. But that's neither here or there. Nor there. Alvarez, no one is saying she's unattractive, by the way, everybody. Meltzer. I know, no shit. Yeah, yeah, I didn't say that at all, but she doesn't stand out to me. When she was in NXT, she was a lot lighter. <laughs> and, well, this got on Twitter, and, well, the, the, the crap storm hit. He says, quote, uh, from, this is from uh, Twitter quotes from Russell Inc. says, uh, is this normal stuff for a journalist to talk about ever? And then you have Peyton Royce talk about that. Um, it says like, um, so what you want me to have me do, Dave? Start myself? This is how nightmares for young women start. You're, the females in your life must be so proud, Peyton Royce. Um, Beth, Cup, uh, Beth Phoenix it says, I'm sorry, this makes me sick. Charlotte Flair, you are smart, beautiful, fair, funny, caring, talented, and so much more. Love you, woman. Uh, Peyton Royce and such says, Emma Moon, get him, girl. You're beautiful inside and out, and you always have been. Can't believe that was even the topic of conversation, and so on and so forth. Best one out of the whole pack was Seth Rollins. It's like, minus six stars, Dave. <laughs> ha! Burn. Uh, but then uh, Dave Meltzer had an apology. In fact, he had two. Here's the first one I'd like to apologize to you. You're an extremely attractive woman. I do recognize the length and pressures on women entertainment uh, would to maintain unnatural looks at times, and I'm glad you pointed this out. Yeah, that's not really much of an apology than just being a completely, well, what's the good one? Just like a robotic talking point. Ugh. Terrible. Just a really bad, uh, just a terrible apology. But he made a second one from the um, F uh, three or four weekly online board. He says, quote, I screwed up bad. Whether we want to admit it or not, there is a double standard when it comes to commentary on men and women's bodies in wrestling. In, in wrestling. And my mentality of wanting to treat everyone the same didn't take into account that the woman who wasn't starved herself for looks, which guys don't. That's what I said. And I think 
may do understand what I meant was a subject I should have avoided and I have learned from that mistake. For those who defend me on these things, and I know you understand I meant no harm, but it was still a mistake to learn from. A better apology, but he still doesn't really take the uh, L much, but he took a half L. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, that was not a bad good look, Dave. Not at all. You shouldn't be doing that uh, whole uh, <laughs> uh, fat shaming type of stuff. Again, this is not the first time Dave does this stuff. I mean, if you remember, you have to go back a couple of... Uh, <clears throat> And there have been other examples. Uh, <clears throat> for example, ladies and gentlemen, you had, um, according to the Medium article, um, New Japan wrestler Tomika, uh, Tomika Hone was accused of uh, domestic violence of, over, a few years, uh, over the previous four years. This is back in 2015. And here's the transfer of a Meltzer comment on the incident in re- the Wrestling Observer Radio. It says, quote, It's a real thing that because Tomika Honaka has actually had some deal going on in television where he's doing a gimmick where he's in love with this very famous or formerly famous pop singer and model from the 90s who was really big like in 95, 97. Anyway, his world girlfriend no one knows about is actually a former wrestler for years and years back and it's his girlfriend for 18 years. He's jealous of this. He's a wrestler. She's jealous of this work angle he's doing on television where he's in love with, you know, this pop girl, star girl. She's going through depression because he's doing a work angle. Anyway, it's women. What can I say? And they and then they went out to dinner, and this would have been very recently. They go out to dinner, and another girl shows up, who I guess is in a fair with four years ago. Now, keep in mind, these two have been together for 18 years. So when you do the math, that's not, it's not a good thing. So they get into a really big fight. Once they come back <laughs> from dinner, and she goes off on something fierce, and I guess somewhere at the point of going off, she realizes she's gone way too far. Whatever she says, she apologized and kicks her in the face. Allegedly kicks her in the face. So she said that and said that he's mean to a the dog. It's one of those things. Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. That's that is not a good way to to, to, to cover domestic violence stuff. Jeez Louise. Ugh. Gosh. <laughs> um, and there's some more about this, but here's something that was really recent. It's something I've talked about recently, and another reason why I don't respect Meltzer and or well, New Japan, is that with Michael Elgin, um, in a in a wrestling um, scene. Um, this story, if you haven't heard it, it really is pissing me off there, but earmuffs, kids, if you don't want to listen to this story. Um, the situation with Michael Elgin, a wrestling fan named Molly. Her birth name, she prefers to, um, go by Mo in her daily life. Mo, who was a victim of sexual assault by Sheen Orleans, by Sheen Orleans, a wrestler who worked for Elgin's promotion, Glory Pro Wrestling, saw her claim discredited by Elgin both privately and publicly. <clears throat> Elgin even continued to book Orleans after he was made aware by the assault uh, of the assault by Mo. Mo, who also accused Elgin of being manipulative and dominant during a relationship the two had together. This has seen Elgin follow a favor with some of the rest of the world, through not all as evidence by assigning with a new contract with New Japan and conversely being booked by uh, AAW and IWA Mid-South which it has been one of the biggest stories in wrestling. When the very first came to light uh, back in December, Dave uh, Meltzer discussed it on Wrestling Zero Radio on December 10th. It's like it being known by the point that Elgin had discredited what Mo said. Meltzer described Elgin as having said some stuff and handled an inf- 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 unfortunate situation badly. That's hardly enough of attention being paid to a famous sex. Yeah, this is the continues to go. It's hard enough attention to being paid to a famous and sexual professional wrestler while uh, trying to surrender a sexual assault victim. In the December 11th edition of Observer, Meltzer observed at Tomo as a woman using a fake name on Twitter, described what happened as a serious incident with a fan, and then published verbatim 
Elgin's 83 two words statement of what about what had occurred. And the kicker, Meltzer never once contacted uh, Mo for comment. <laughs> so, so yeah, Meltzer basically just said, yeah, just put that thing up there, Elgin's word, without any any type of uh, contact for uh, Mo and everything else. And of course, he said the text would docker the heavy altar, of course. And, you know, uh, Meltzer, you know, said the text with Dr. Haley Arthur. He talked about Orange was going to find a definition of slamming the case and that the text shouldn't be paid attention to because the meaning was changed. All, and then all this again without contacting the victim of sexual assault. His evidence for all this was a Tumblr blog. <sighs> There's Tumblr again, which was created with the intent of smearing, slut slamming, and victim slamming Mo. Meltzer, who has been a journalist for decades, and learn from Frank Delfer, who went about this all the wrong ways. Exactly. If, if you're a journalist, you have to check your sources, recheck your sources, and everything else. Something, I'm not a journalist. Even I even I had to do, I had to learn that the hard way. But you have to check your sources, recheck your sources, and double check your sources. Meltzer doesn't do that. <sighs> and by the way, link in the description in the, me- the Medium article. So yeah, Dave Meltzer, trash, and <laughs> not really a surprise. Anyway, we're going to take a small, well, little musical break to get this back into track and such. Because next up, we're going to be doing a review of Lucha Underground here, live on the Duke CT Lounge. We'll be right back, right after this. By the way, if you have, if you're listening to the podcast, thank you. I love you for it. But remember, you can find me now on iTunes, but also you can find me on YouTube slash Duke CT, the Duke CT Lounge. Also, you can find me on freaking awesome network.com and also on medic expression.com and on blogspot.com slash Duke CT by Duke CT Productions and uh, on bitshoot.com. In fact, let me just see something right quick. And let's see what about BitChute. Let's see. You can find my stuff there as well. Let's see. Oh, by the way, it's um. Oh, that way, BitChute is like uh, thirty six percent funded. So here's hoping that you know it's going to be um. You know that sort of stuff. Um, uh, like I said, thirty six percent funded. Um, here's hoping that it will continue to grow. And, um, you know, hey, that means a actual, real type of, ch- you know, you know, uh, a real type of a competitive YouTube. That's what I hope. And again, the people who continue to, push, um, you know, uh, to continue to watch me over at Bitchu, I thank you and I love y'all for it. Thank you on Bitchu, baby! Yeah! Love y'all over at Bitchu and on YouTube and on you know, everything else. Oh, and by the way, I will be uh, doing my live stream on Thursday, you know, tomorrow and Friday. My hope, 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 hope um, 
I will um, have the review done um, on Saturday. I'm, I'm typing the stuff right now, making sure I'm going to you know, keep looking at the script of Science Matters. Latest will hopefully be on Monday, but I'm going to hopefully get this done. Here's hoping I'll have it done. Then it can go to Secret Agent Clank. And after that, we'll go to some anniversary because I got some stuff to say about TNA and I can't wait to do that. But that will be for later. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And talk about Lucha Underground. So, let's take a look at Lucha Underground Episode 10, Season 4. Uh, let's get to this point on um, this week's episode. Kill Shot is pretty much going to be doing two for going to be pretty busy as it's going for two fights. He's challenges a gift for the gods for the uh, title against El Dragon Azteca Jr. and he defends and defends the trio's title against the reptile. Uh, you know, um, and the trio's title against the reptile tribe. And Makanza Quarto has another sacrifice as well. And uh, let's see if we get into the. You know, uh, before we get into the show, we have Antonio Creto sitting in his office, going through the mail. Uh, uh, the invitation to Mondo and Tanya uh, for wedding says, eh, they'll never last. Tossing the fight inside, the and then Cobra Moon comes in, bursting the door, demanding a trio's title shot. And um, and she gets it. Like, yeah, you are feisty. It's just a big loss last week. He says, her tribe is stronger than ever, and... He said, uh, you know, but since Drago is pretty much gone. He says, but Dra- Cobra said they didn't need Drago. They want what they deserve. So Antonio granted them a title match. Then Credo told her to be Dragon. Ha! And she just slid it away. It's like, no one has a sense of humor. Then we have another gift, a sacrifice to the gods. As the rabbit tried, which is just as Paul London and Salador in the ring. And then Credo's like... Why the rat back says says Salto was gonna show him what they could do, and then now uh, he was the well the um, new um <laughs> well sacrifice to God. He he put up some nice stuff, to, you know, nice stuff to actually pick some victories up, but at the end of the day, well, Paul you know, looks like uh, the rabbit tried is all but one, the last of the last, my friends of Lucha Underground. And here's the interesting part. I made actually a nice little uh, tweet about this and uh, such. Uh, but um, let's see. Where is it? Uh, let's see. Where is that tweet? I know I made that tweet somewhere. Uh, let's see. Because uh, uh, I said this about Lucha Underground. Says well, as I say, well, it looks like the rabbit tribe is just Paul London and Killer Cross. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. And I say hashtag follow the right rabbit and Lucha Gang. And guess who liked the tweet? Oh, Paul London. Yep, Paul London actually legitimately follow. Uh, actually liked the tweet. Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. <laughs> so yeah, then Salvador is gone. That means that Lucha. That means yep, it's all him and. Get across, so looks like it's just that's very interesting. So, what's going to be the right rabbit? What is going to who is going to be the new sacrifice? What's going to happen? Is Paul London going to sacrifice himself to the gods, or is he going to do what is going to be the well, white rabbit's plan? Who knows? Who knows? Next up, you have Son of Having Mac and Locking Together. It says, Half a said, Killshot, like, you know, Half a said, No, Killshot don't like him. And then Killshot says, No, I'd say I, I, I don't like you, but I don't respect the having, doesn't respect having the trio's tie him to Havoc, and doesn't appreciate being left out of the Gift of the Gods title match. And she's like, Why you go out and pin me? I wanted to be in the Gift of the Gods time, but yet, yeah, you know what? That's okay. Because I am going uh, to beat. I'm going to go and get the cards the title match, and I'm going to do something that you all can't do. It says, hey, man, we got to defend the Tia's title. So it's, it says, man, kill something. You don't, I see how it is. 
He's just like, y'all don't care about me. Y'all care about the gold. Basically trying to basically make the guilt around them. He says, All right, I'll help you defend the trio's title after he wins the gift of the God's belt. And then we have an announcement that Pentagon Dark will uh, defend the Lucha Underground title against Brian Cage in a last man or machine standing match. So that feud is going to keep going. I can't wait because I like the first match. Now it's going to be no rules. That's going to be really good. Next up is the AL Dragon Azteca versus Killshot for the Gift of the Gods uh, title match. This was a, actually a pretty good match. Uh, both guys, good chemistry with each other. Nice kicks and such. And then you had um, <coughs> had a nice um, a head scissors takedown to the floor with a uh, kill shot, which uh, Dragon hit a uh, um, you know hit a head scissors down to the floor, which was really good. This guy again, this guy, these two really had a pretty good match. And then he hits a uh, they they he hit. Uh, Killshot hit the um, the basically uh, the kill stomp, and for a two count, surprisingly, and then um, then after that he uh, then after the, the, them going back and forth, Dragon Azteca hit a nice whirling DDT for the Uno Dos Tres, and he retains his gift of the gods title. Then <laughs> um, later on. Um, then later on, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, I made this nice little tweet and I actually got a response to believe it or not, Freddie Prince Jr. and, uh, <laughs> and others, but man, here it is, um, about this tweet before I get into uh, the tweet, this is this, you have dragon sitting outside and Aaron start walking up saying he's keeping himself hidden. The dragon said he didn't deserve a second chance with all the bad things he did as part of the reptile tribe. Aaron Star says, you know what, man, that was all Cobra Moon. Then, and Dragon said, I didn't deserve this um, friendship. And then they shook hands. He said, Dragon's like, and Arrow said, we're going to meet again. So he's like, like, I don't know. But he says, we're going to meet again. Arrow starts said, we're going to meet again. So, yeah. I, and you know, and I said this tweet. And you know what? These two really care for each other. They're like, yeah, you know what? I will say it right now. The best friendship in all of wrestling. Dragon and Arrow Star. And I said it right there. And I will continue to say it. And a lot of people agree with me. And I know Freddie Prince Jr. basically... <laughs> He's lied in my tweet saying, better than Santino, Santino and me? Better than the eternal wrestling friendship? And I'm like, mm, eh, eh, maybe. But honestly, I am. Um, but you know, I say that because again, he it is right up there. The friendships, this, the lucha, that's to me. And I sit here and I'm like, why don't the, the pro wrestling has more re- friendships like this? That actually goes and saves his friend. Instead of just saying, I'm going to beat him, you know, um, that sort of thing. He saves his friend. Um, Drag- Aerostar saves his friend, even though Drago feels like he doesn't deserve his friendship. But, you know, here's hoping he's going to, you know, get back on the good positive track. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with Drago? But, yeah. And uh, then we get to the main event. Uh, they get to the, afterwards, we get to our main event. Killshot Mac, Son of Havoc versus the Reptiles Tribe. As you have Cobra Moon leading Jeremiah Snake and Daga to the ring. But she's going to be competing in the match. And then the Mac and Savage came up. But this was a pretty much a tornado, uh, tornado rules type match. As pretty much. Um, yeah, it pretty much a, you know, it was a three on two handicap match for the most part. Because Killshot wasn't even in the ring for the most part. They did not do anything, and um, and then we have one of the most interesting submissions, as you have, um, um, <laughs> uh, you had a um, one of the most interesting submissions. Uh, let me just see if I can find. It. Ah, yes, here it is. Uh, you have one person with a head scissors knocking, um, you know, uh, you know, a, a line of submissions of uh, when kick shot returned. You had a line of submissions as each one, you know, Daga and everyone else. Just, and there's like row of submissions from Jeremiah Snake to uh, Kill Shot. Uh, uh, then you have Cobra Moon. Then you have um, Son of Havoc. Then you had Daga. And then, oh, uh, Mac came around. And I'm not kidding you. By the way, 
Killshot returned, and to, you know, Killshot returned, and he um, spin uh, you know, the general snake spin Killshot faced. Not a good way to welcome someone back. Trust me, that's not a good way to to, to say hi to someone. Uh, anyone, in fact, I don't think there's any culture that just says, you know, goes in and spits somebody's face. I don't say that Ace Ventura movie, that Ace Ventura 2. Don't, I don't want to see Ace Ventura 2 in the comments. That don't count. Uh, anyway, um, so, by the way, I think we, we might each reviewed that. I don't know. Maybe I'll join the podcast and see if I do I reviewed all the Ace Ventura movies. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, um, yeah, he came in, and then actually, you know, everyone was in this, like, chain submissions, and then Matt came in the ring, turned everyone into, into a Boston crab, and it's like, and I should have tweeted this out, but I didn't, I'm like, wow, and it turned pretty much a human centipede, everyone asked, if he, like, you know, this is probably the most PG-13 cent, um, human centipede ever. In fact, if this was, if, if that was, a, like, basically a PG-13 version of human centipede, that would pretty much be it. If us saying that from Lucha Underground, it's pretty awkward. <laughs> but yeah, it's and after they all uh, pretty much got out of the ring, they basically uh, unhooked themselves. He, uh, Mac just hit a massive flip by, took everyone out. Then Daga hit a dive, and Havoc got one. Everyone was diving, all diving. Um, and then Cole Moon got a dive, and then Kill just just jumped up and just gave him one good, you know, five across the eyes. <laughs> And then he tried to suplex her, but then, you know, then, you know, she blocked it, and they knocked her down. Then, um, she, uh, gets, you know, carry, um, Sarah Meyer said carries her, and then she just head scissors to take down and kill child on the floor. And then, um, and it looked like, um, it was all over, but yet, um, Hiver came out the top, uh, rope. Uh, you know, hitting, you know, moving on. Then Mac hit a stunner on Moon. Then followed a small drop uh, on her to uh, on Snake before a two count. S- then Snake blocked uh, Mac on the top row, kicked him, brought him down for a nice, nice little stretch position. And then Havoc came out and the double star on, on Jeremiah Snake. Then hit a, I hit an outside dive who actually landed on Kill Shot. Then. Havoc cleaned on top of uh, a high with move, and then Killshot jumped up and shoved Havoc off the top rope. And then Jeremiah State covered, and then they be- and then the Reptile Tribe became the new trio's champions. And then, after the match over, Killshot got in Havoc's face, and he jumped, and then he pretty much, well, nailed a double stop after just pretty much mocked him, saying, Now you want to get up. Now you want to make, and then next he'll hit the double stop on him. And then Mick, Matt, the Mac was like, what the heck's going on? Yeah, kill shot. Yeah, pretty much kill shots uh, turned he- uh, turn, uh, heel, essentially. Then, next you have uh, Melissa Santos invited Cage to the ring. And then he says, Pering on is going to learn what I am. He says, I'm not a man. I'm a bam. Turning on Dark came in and just kicked him right in the face. And then they kept fighting and fighting. And then next, you know, he, uh, Penta kicked the fan because, well, that's, you know, he got into the ring and something like that. Then Cage fought to the steps of the temple and they just kept going, fighting, fighting. And then he grabbed <coughs> one of the guitars, uh, band members' guitars. And the guitar player's like, no, hey, man, get my guitar. And then Penta nailed him with a the guitar. Hit, you know, hit them with that old El Cabong uh, and such. And then Cage took the cameraman down. They just kept fighting. And then they just go to another wall, like just throwing pen around the wall. And then doing just moves off the top, like basically setting themselves up for the match. And then Brian Cage, and then Brian Cage put his hands on uh, the uh, on a uh, uh, father Ricochet. Ha <laughs> ha! Funny. Who is going to be there to preside over Mundo's and and Tanya's relling, uh, uh, Redding. Then Penta nailed Cage on a steel chair, and then Penta threw their father down, and then broke his arm. And he's the good guy in here. And he's a good guy. <laughs> he's a good guy in this scenario, by the way. He's the baby face. And I'm sure right now, Rowdy C is screeching right now. If he ever sit, yeah, you know, if I ever sit down to him and watch. By the way, I am going to see if I can force him to watch this, like, Lucha Underground and just have him go completely insane. 
<laughs> oh gosh, and he's gonna yell, "How do you say you say you want good guys and baby faces to me? How do you keep cheering for this guy who breaks arms? He broke a a priest's arm. How do you say that?" Uh, well, he was going to marry two hill, so maybe he's, you know, a bad priest. <laughs> Oh gosh, that'd be terrible. Oh no. And then, well, they kept to they two keep fighting. And then we get to well, with the mag went to enter uh, the, the end of the segment to uh, Antonio Cronto says he wants to kill shot in the match next week. But yet, Mil already has uh, uh, but Mac already has a match against Mil Montez in a haunted house match. And he says, "All right, okay." He says, "If that's the case, then if I got to go through Mil Montez in the haunted house match." Put on the Hollywood hat says, trick or treat, mother. And he ended the show like that. And I will say this if this is going to be a haunted house match, at least I will say it would be a lot better than the uh, House of Horrors match that well, Randy Orton and uh, Bray Wyatt had. Like, you know, dang it, yeah, this is Lucha Underground. So you know it's going to be at least so, like 10 times better than that. God, that match was so terrible. Why were there floating baby dolls? It's like they're trying to be like The Conjuring and trying to be like all these like Hollywood films and not and miss the damn point of them. That's WWE in a nutshell. <laughs> trying to be creepy and everything else being unfailed miserably. But anyway, that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you liked it. I know you guys like, love it, and everything else in between. Uh, by the way, once again, thank you so much for watching and listening. Almost 20,000 downloads. I am, again, blessed and happy that this show has made y'all to something, um, you know, uh, something that's great and lovely and wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for doing all this stuff. Anyway, this is Duke CT here. Peace and love. I will see y'all when I see y'all. Later.